man, big man. <laughs> How far now? Yes, man. My name is Abimbola Labrissi. Uh, popular in as pastor and uh, social media and stuff. Um, I grew up in Ibadan, Nigeria. Um, got my BSc. Got my BSc from the University of Ghana, Accra, Legon. Um, computer science and business management. It's been a while I used the certificate, so it's easy to forget. Um, currently into um, brand influencing and uh, doing some things on the side. Oh yeah, well, um, I, I actually had a normal Twitter account at first. Um, that was, I think, a lab BC or something, one was low-key account. And then for some reason got suspended. So when I came back and I opened a new account, I, um, I wanted a name that stood out. Something that catches your attention, you understand? I mean, if you touch, we just all are all, all are BC. I mean, there are thousands of BC, thousands of all are just scrolling. Through. But then I wanted something that was catchy, that um, caught your attention. And then I remember my mom was always like, because I used to get in trouble a lot when I was younger, and then she was like, when you grow up, you will be a pastor, you will see. So I was like, okay, a pastor, that So that was that. Well, my degree is uh, is in two parts, a major and a minor. The computer science was the major and the business management aspect was the minor. Now, I fell out of love with the computer science part for some reason. But I had to, you know, I had to see it through because my dad was spending thousands of dollars so I don't want him to kill me. So, I, um, in the business management aspect, there were some courses that I, I really fell in love with, namely marketing, uh, sociology, psychology, and other courses. So, um, after school, I knew I didn't want to do anything related to computer science. I wanted to follow the business aspect of my degree. And what being God, during my service year, I kind of found myself in, on Twitter. And someone approached me, I think it was Femi Factor. So he asked me, I think I was on 10,000 followers then, do you want to uh, monetize your account? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I need money. And I, I did hear from him after a while, but I think he did some low-key works. And then I think one of my three major gigs first was uh, with First Bank. I think that was true Femi, because I, I saw him in the campaign later, so that was that. Uh, about a year and uh, maybe two months ago, about and uh, yeah, about a year and some months. I realized I'm sometimes funny, and um, I find a way to infuse that into the things I say or the things I speak about. And it's just a part of me. No matter how serious the situation is, I always find a way to make myself laugh. Okay, because at the end of the day, life is really short, and we have very, very limited time to spend. So, um, it could take, for instance, maybe everybody's talking about a particular topic on the timeline. And if I want to talk about the topic, I'm not going to be too serious about it, or I'm not going to be rude about the topic either. I just find a way to balance it in the middle where it's like, it's kind of funny, but it's kind of true. So, you get my message, but at the same time, you're kind of going to laugh. And recently, I've been trying to um, extend my content into video content, which has not been easy because naturally um, I'm a very shy person. When I, if I, I prefer to be in the corner of the room where no one is particularly seeing me, but I can see everybody and I can observe everybody. And that's kind of my favorite thing to do. So that's that. Well, naturally, an influencer is supposed to be able to convert for your brand that you are, might be working for because. Um, if you're an influencer, just like the name suggests, you should be able to influence people to be able to do things like to be able to buy something. So you want to influence someone to be able to attend the show. You want to influence someone to be able to to be able to uh, to convert to sales for your uh, particular campaign. Because the aim of your campaign most times is to convert either your 
spreading the word, you want to make people in, you want to make people informed about a particular thing or you are trying to make sales. So if you can call yourself an influencer if you are not actually you know influencing anybody at the end of the day. Because it's just like okay, you have like thousands of followers and you say something and at the back end we are not seeing anything. Take for instance I I give you a promo code and tell you that okay for every um, 10,000 naira that someone spends and they use your code, you'll get 1,000% off. Now at the back end on my own, uh, me that gave you the campaign on my system, uh, nobody's using your code, James that. But you are talking, you are talking, you are getting it to the now that nobody's using your code. So that's all that I don't think that person can be said to be an influencer. Yeah, um, yeah, it used to be that way, but then that stopped so then I got to be afraid but for some reason. I don't know maybe they're afraid of it. It didn't stop fully, but at least the market reduced small. So yeah, anyway, yeah, I am your friend. I'll shout out to Baba Baba. Uh, my guy had to see. Okay, so um, there was this Bona Boy gig we did in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So I came from Abuja. To Lagos, there. I was an Abuja boy, you know. So I came from Abuja to Lagos so for the, I think that was in December. So on the group chats where we usually uh, discuss about the campaign and stuff, there was this person that I had was as the king, you know, I really see people's numbers. So I, I was seeing us as the king. person always replying to me in a, in a weird manner because I thought it was a guy. I was as the king. I said, Why this guy they send ads to me? Like, what? Why? So um, I, I later found out because when, when we were gathered at the hotel room at the hotel, so came say ah it's me, so that's the king and then oh yeah I girl ah it's okay now. So we got talking and uh, I guess the rest is just true. So this of course I think everybody every influencer is because no matter how hard ah, you follow the rules sometimes something is just happen for some weird reason but at the end of the day I, I think one of the best things you can do is try to minimize um, some certain actions you take with the accounts most of the time is when people get suspended if you are not violating any rules you should probably maybe your accounts suddenly started and suddenly starts acting like a bot now the thing is you know um, these people don't have time I mean they can't hire enough staffs, enough staff, sorry, to be able to oversee literally millions of accounts. So it's uh, AI that does that's artificial intelligence. Combs your pages, combs the uh, the, the app, Apple, sorry, combs the uh, what's it called? What's what I'm looking for? Combs the um, the web. Okay, like say if maybe you tweet uh, a trigger word like maybe you say at something at x express i'm going to kill you you get that's a trigger word on twitter and your account will most likely get um, temporarily limited and if you get a bunch of those and it's a suspension because that's you breaking several rules because now when you send that, that when the ai picks up at clinical clinical i'm going to kill you doesn't care if you are joking doesn't know you are joking because it's not i mean if it just be a human behind it i would look like okay this person said, oh, I'm going to come, let's play FIFA. And then your reply is, come, I'm going to kill you. you get? So, you are not actually trying to kill the person. You're just saying you're going to kill the person on FIFA. But the AI doesn't know that. So once it picks that up, you're already on the app, which is not what they are. Yeah, it works both ways. Um, if uh, it works both ways, most of the time, as a brand influencer, the brands are the ones who reach out to you on Twitter chat. Because um, with a couple of my guys on uh, Instagram, especially the really popular ones, the managers sometimes have to pitch to brands. But the case is different on Twitter, as like Mazi B once said that. I think there was a time people were like really driving influencers and stuff, and he said, okay, we might not know our worth, but the brands will reach out to us too. Now, most of the time, when um, brands need to get the word out there, they know that they know that they, they know the people they need, so to speak. So they are the ones who usually reach out. But then there are some times when you have to pitch. If maybe you know 
things are not, they are, people are not reaching out, then you have to actually reach to grants. Yes, they can be called influencers because at the end of the day, like I said earlier, an influencer basically in the simplest terms has to influence. If I have 2,000 followers, who are all 2,000 people dedicated to my particular niche? So, for instance, I am um, a fashion designer, and all my 2,000 followers are fashion inclined. That's like my target audience, those are my followers. If I have um, a campaign, and I need influencers. Usually, when I am running campaigns, I don't use only uh, macro influencers. I use micro influencers, I use nano influencers, and I use macro influencers. Now, nano influencers can be considered people between that follower range, between like, I would say, 1k to like 5k, and the micro influencers is like 5k upwards. I mean, people can classify them differently, it depends on how you classify them personally, I guess. But at the end of the day, I look at what this person can actually offer in the follower account. Because if I'm looking at the follower account, anybody can just wake up one morning and, you know, go buy an account or something and the person starts it. I mean, the person is not going to give me the conversions I'm looking for. So it's going to be like a waste of money at the end of the day. So yeah, someone with 2,000 followers can be said and if I I'll beat nano or micro to that influence. Oh yeah, well, uh, I guess that's one of the things, uh, okay, cool, so before the old influencer thing started or influencing, um, I was just on Twitter for the fun of it. I actually enjoyed making people laugh and just being myself, you okay? get? And a lot of people who I know, like who are my friends, who are into this also, like they didn't, they didn't wake up one day and say, oh, you know what, I'm going to open Twitter and I want to become an influencer, you get? It was more of a stroke of fate. Like boys were just online just having fun catching crews and we realized that oh, okay you can actually monetize this. So if you are not the type who like enjoys it, you get like maybe if you go into it with the mindset of oh, well, the next also I want to my friends and I want like I go make money. But at some point it can get tiring and I guess it's I guess that's why people say you have to have passion for um, the work you do so you don't burn out easy. So if you are passionate about it, if you actually enjoy putting out content there that people enjoy, I think you won't run out of content and you'll always have your mutuals and followers. So I guess that's why it works. Well, um, first of all, it's like a community. So that's like a community. Um, if you are by yourself, you are not going to go very far because it's just like if you want to build a community, you can't you can't build it alone. The rap will say you come with that it has like one tree can't make up a forest. So you have to reach out to other people, like-minded people who are like you, who you guys can start together so that they can help you get your content out there. Because um, it's not only Twitter, it's actually the, um, if you're trying to build a business online, you need other people who are into um, you are into who are into your content and if you're an influencer you need to work with other influencers because if it's just you i mean it's not as if you just wake up on money and have thousands of followers you have to uh, continuously build overnight over years in fact do you understand so you have to have like maybe a community of people people who you can DM them to help you reach into your tweet like if for a brand that like, is just starting up what i've noticed is even though you might not be uh, getting like retweets like immediately if your content is good and I mean your content is really good um, what I believe is content is king and at the end of the day what, what determines how far you go is your content so if your content is good you can actually send you can actually DM or send a message or mention people who you who if they retweet your tweet for you it's going to go far now what I'm saying is Take for instance, I'm just starting out. I have zero followers. I have first of all, I'm going to start. I'm going to try to follow some people, and then if what I'm doing is actually really good, send a DM to a couple, to a couple of people. Please help me retweet this. Please help me retweet this. Please help me. By then, like 20 or 30 people will retweet this. I mean, come on. Other people will see it and pick up from there. So if you continually dish out good content, like then for, for the first time, if I see that video, I can be a stroke of love. Ah, this guy funny. 
I saw him second time, I said, oh wow, this guy again. The third time, oh wow, this guy again. Oh, wow, this guy is funny, and I followed him. So, I guess that's how it works. You guys should give your life to Christ. <laughs> yeah, but sure, yeah, that, that's part of it. I, I was going to say, but seriously, but then, it's part of it, yeah? But at the end of the day, if you, I, I believe, like, life is, life is like a journey. It sounds cliche, but it is, because you start somewhere, you end somewhere, that's the journey. Um, life may not particularly be going the way you want it to correctly. I mean, there are ups and downs and stuff like that. But I feel if you have this particular um, never give up attitude, I think you are going to be fine at the end of the day. Because there are either two things that happen. Either you make it out or you die. It sounds dark, but it's the, it's the truth. And as, as long as it's not um, it's not over yet, I guess it's not the end. You just have to keep on going. And Nigeria is actually not particularly fair. I mean, I consider myself lucky because what well, I find myself doing currently, I never planned to do it. <coughs> My plan was particularly after NYC to probably you know, start looking for a job or something. And um, I just found myself doing something I liked and I enjoyed. And I just forgot about all that. And, it's been good so far for um, a lot of people are not like that lucky and you know they have to continually do one or two to do one or two and I mean it gets tiring but I don't know you just have to keep at it and you need to be fine. Thank you, thank you. Alright, so guys you've had it all from obviously popularly known as Pastor PC on, on Twitter. So this episode of another interview has come to our name so stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell, bell button to get our updates. Thank you. After an ABC, which after, we don't finish all this, what we can do now. So which matter are they set for this year? Be which one are they resolve? Yes, <laughs> I mean, I don't finish all the matter for you. Yeah, we don't actually finish all the matter with the set, but you get one, your old boy made it down there, down the, where they live for down the streets here. They thought say the, uh, this thing, they thought say the, the child was made it by my giver. Say so the dog made it their compound, carry and work, and we never see the dog, and we never see the guy. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, then we did some morning. <laughs> Right, so what do you talk now? See, you don't you don't stream up as we do. I don't stream up no. every day. When I wake up in the morning, I stream up. When I go to sleep, I stream up. As you are going now, you stream up. <laughs> <laughs>